It's a top 100 board games of all time. This is like a sort of a, basically like a Euro game. We're sort of travelling across the map of East Asia and that, uh, trying to amass points. It's like more like a it's like a dice dice rolling game. So you you roll and dice depending on what you roll. And that's the sort of actions that you can take. But the thing that makes this different from most Euro games is that everyone takes charge of a personality, and each personality has got this amazing like game breaking ability and uh, when you play it you like look at other people's abilities thinking A but then they're looking at your ability and going A so yeah that's the excellent game highly recommended Marco Polo brilliant number 49 is uh, Dear Bird or Dear Bird Bird okay. Shipyard basically in English yeah this is a uh, this is by Vladimir Sushi, the same guy that done um, Pulsar. Yeah, this is like it's another game that uses a rondel mechanism. So you're taking turns building ships and then sending them out on these uh, blue ribboned voyages to score points. In a, basically, in a parade, a bit like Dungeon Pets. But, but yeah, this has got a reputation for being really heavy and a bit of a beast to learn, but not really. It's, it's quite simple, really. There's three rondelles in this, so it's a, a bit of a triple whammy. But uh, yeah, because we like Mad Girls games, so this is a this is a staple. Number 48 is the Olden but Golden Puerto Rico. Probably one of the first games to have like a sort of a role selection mechanism. So yeah, you, everybody picks a role, and all the roles that are left over, they get, get a coin put on them and make them a bit more attractive for the next round and then you you take the action associated with your role and then everyone else takes the same action but it's like a neutered version of the action so it's in your interest to get the action that you want because you get to perform a stronger action and then you're building buildings on your plantation and mass victory points and um, yeah this one never gets old some people do say that you know it's, it sort of favours experienced players because there's one route through the game but I'm not that good so we don't give it Monkeys. Number 47 is Mysterium. We've got the, I don't know if it's the Polish or the Ukrainian version of this one, but it doesn't matter because it's uh, still a fantastic game. It's just, uh, some people say it's like Dixit mixed with Cluedo, but uh, it sort of stands up on its own, really. So, one player plays the ghost, and everyone else's investigators trying to find out who who killed the ghost and with what and whatever and just a bit like Dixit where you're playing cards and giving clues and uh, after I think seven rounds either the murder is revealed or, or not but yeah this is uh, this is really good it kind of suffers in a sort of strange sort of way where some of the clues are quite vague but then on the flip side of that it sort of uh, it benefits from that because it keeps you guessing all the way through, so yeah. Uh, Taj Mini de Mosto or Mysterium. Excellent. Uh, 46 is Spartacus, a game of blood and treachery. Sort of. My, my wife won't play this one, she says it's too violent. But um, yeah, so you've got uh, three stages in this one. You've got the stage where you're, you're gathering all your cards up and paying off your slaves. Then you've got the market phase where you, you're buying better weapons and stuff, and then you've got the um, the arena phase or whatever you call it. I can't remember what you call it exactly. You've got the arena phase where you do combat, and you can all bet on who you think's going to win. But, but yeah, <laughs> this, this game is mental. There's some things in this that's really quite not shocking, but yeah, it raises an eyebrow. And uh, yeah. We like getting around the table and playing six players with this one because it gets really brutal. Yeah, Sparkers. Excellent game. Number 45 is Stefan Feld's Trajan. Intimidating. Brilliant game. Love this bit of strategy. Yeah, I remember 
a well, I was read about this one years and years ago saying that there, there's no real one strategy that, that you can rely on to win this game and I, I agree with them it's a uh, it's, it's not the point salad is overused but but yeah really the theme is it's pretty weak on this one but it's like a typical failed game you sort of uh, match in tiles to get points uh, going in places where other people want to go but they can't go because you're there and that sort of thing but, but yeah Trajan for a, a brain burning evening you can't get much better than this well you can but you'll see about that okay number 44 is, is Captain Sonar yeah this is a this is a mad game as well yeah so it's like a sort of submarine simulator sort of and uh Everybody takes a specific role related to the operation of the sub. You know, if one of you is the navigator that, that guides you around the map, and you're looking for the other players. One of you launches the torpedoes. You've got a captain in the middle that gives all the orders and that. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a really really fast moving game. It's a really really fun. You know, sort of if you can get the eight players, because sort of well, it works with six, but if you can get the eight players around the table and you. you Give it a couple of practice goes to get get in the swing of things. Yeah, you, know, you can't you can't really go wrong with this one. There was a, like a more simpler version, I think, just called Sonar. But but yeah, this with the expansion and the extra maps, this is the one you want to go for. Let's get in Sonar, baby. Number forty-three is uh, Troa or with ladies of Troa. Yeah. Uh, another Euro game, sort of leaving the sort of party dexterity games to one side for the time being. And uh, yeah, this is uh, it's got a reputation for being one of the greatest games ever made. And uh, I'm going to agree with them, especially with the expansion. So it's like a, everyone gets a role, gives them a special ability, and um, it sort of tries to replicate the uh, the rebuilding of Troa in medieval times. And uh, you know, it's another dice rolling game, sort of quite similar to the Marco Polo in a, well it's not really, but you're rolling dice, taking actions based on the dice, going to locations, and uh, yeah, if you want a solid trial and tested Euro that will be around for the rest of eternity, Troa is the one to go for. Do it! Number 42, another racing game. Absolute classic Formula D, based on a, a French game called Formula De De De. It's essentially it's basically roll and move, but the thing is, is that on each corner you've got a number that tells you the amount of times that you've got to stop on that corner, and if you don't, you crash and burn. So yeah, oh, we love this one, especially with the kids. They love the feeling of. You've got these little gear sticks with your, your little dashboard and they love the feeling of moving their little gear, gear sticks up and making their own noise and uh, you know, it's great for a four or seven year old and uh, yeah formula d millions of map packs available for this one never gets old and uh, you want a really decent solid racing game that takes the roll and move mechanism and uh, actually makes it work formula d is the one for you Encounter. Uh, this back in the days when the Games Workshop would make the best board games known to humanity in 1984. But uh, yeah, still in print these days, Fantasy Flight. Yeah, so everyone gets an alien with a game breaking ability. And uh, you go around the table, you draw a card from the Destiny deck, and that tells you who you're gonna beat up that round. And you ask for assistance from everyone else, and it's just a back and forth of negotiation and stitch up. Yeah, some people don't like it because they can't lie or cheat on their mates, but in this house, this is the master. Yeah. 